Hi, everybody. I'm excited to be here again in Michael's classroom to work with some amazing We Are Memory Keepers tools. So today we are going to be working with the mini cinch. And in the class description, I told you I would show you multiple styles of cinching in multiple ways to make mini books with this amazing tool that I just love. So I have a lot to cover. So I'm just going to jump right in. And Jimena is, can interrupt me with questions as we go along. She'll watch the chat for me. And I'm just so glad you're here to learn about this awesome tool. OK, so the mini cinch, what is different about it from the regular cinch? Well, it's small and compact. That's the very first thing. It's obvious from the beginning that you can see that. The other difference with it is it only uses the 5 8 inch coils. So in the class description, in the class list, I put the four pack of the gold binding wire coils. And you'll notice they're the 0.625. That's the size that you want, or 5 8 inch, that works in the mini cinch. If you're going to do a bigger coil than that, then you're going to need to use our regular big giant original cinch machine, okay? Other than that, they work fairly the same way. So I'm just gonna jump in and we're going to start and I'm gonna show you. So the first thing you do is this little handle is attached right here by this little wire. So you just pop that off. Now you're ready to go. Okay, the first little book we're going to make is this little summer book right here. Okay, so this one I did as a flip book with the coil at the top. So this is just a little summer bucket list that I thought might be fun for our family to just flip through and do all of these different things. Now, my kids are older, but I still put some fun, like little kid stuff in here just because that feels like summer to me and I feel like they will still have fun with it. So let's get started. Jimena is going to attach a document that has all the instructions for the three books that we'll be making today written out step by step. So don't worry if you can't keep up and write all of the measurements. I'm not going to worry about that because they'll be in there. Also included in that, at the bottom of those instructions, I've included my printable, if you can see that there, of the cut aparts that I did to put in this little flip book. So you can, it's editable, just a Word document, so you can go ahead and change them, make them your own, or use the ones that I've done in the color scheme that matches Obed Marshall's Buenos Dias, which is the paper pad we're using today, mostly. So I love this collection because it has so many fun, bright colors. And at Michael's, I also was able to find some travel themes, some summery feeling, sticker books and th stick alphabet stickers to go with it, as well as this little pack of four and a half by six and a half inch white cardstock. I love buying these little packs. They're great for cards, but you can also use them in mini books. So we're going to do that today. And then the last thing that we're using is this really cool poster board that I found last time I was wandering through Michael's. So this one's cut in half. So it is full poster board size, but it's this frosted kind of plastic acrylic material. And we're going to use that on some of our albums today. So the very first part of this album is the stand. So you'll notice this is a freestanding album. So it has this little back part that's made out of that poster board and it can just stand up on its own on the desk, which I think is great for a flip, flip album. And it's little, so this one measures mm, two and three fourths about by three and a half. So it's a small one. It, with any of these books, you can size up or down as you want and I'll show you how to do bigger things on the mini cinch. So I went ahead and I cut a little strip of that frosted poster board and I'm also using the trim and scoreboard by We Are Memory Keepers. It opens up like this, you lock the back, and you've got a cutter and a scoring surface all in one, which I love to use. So I just went ahead and cut this down. Since it was so large, I like traced it out a little bit with pencil and then cut around it with my scissors just to get it to a more manageable size. And then I straightened it up and trimmed it up on my scoreboard. So to use this scoreboard, right now I have it set to trim so you can see I can put that all the way through so you just flip this piece over and set it back down in the track and now it's got this little ledge right here to butt up against for scoring okay so I took my little piece of poster board and it scores just perfectly easy as pie even though it's a plastic it scores great so I went ahead and scored it at three and a quarter four and an eighth and four and seven eighths. And again, all of these measurements are in your document, in the instructions. Okay, and then I just accordion folded it. So 
You can do this one of two ways. It takes a little bit more bending, but I just like to bend mine in half first and get that edge and then come back in and do these sides. And eventually you'll accordion it like that. So you have this little piece that has a mountain and a valley and that is the base for our stand. Okay, and you can adjust this up or down as once you have your pages in to kind of, because it's that plastic, it kind of holds its shape. It's nice and sturdy. You could also do this if you don't have this frosted plastic poster board, you could do it with a double extra thick card cardstock or double up your papers to make them extra thick so that they hold in well. Okay, let's cinch this part first. Okay, so I have this, let me get it this way so you can see the ruler guide on here. So right here, you'll see that there is a ruler guide on the platform of the mini cinch. Now I'm working with something that completely fits within this ruler guide, right? Let me use a page so you can see it a little better. Okay, so I can just use this ruler guide and it fits within here. So I don't need to worry about these holes at all for something that is about five inches wide, okay, or smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and take my piece and find center. I don't know the best way to show you this, maybe working backwards. There we go. Okay, so I can see that this centering this one, I am at the two and three and a three and a let's see, three and a quarter mark here, three and a three fourths there. So you'll see there's this little center arrow and it just lines up perfectly in there. I just make sure that I'm the same distance away from the ruler mark on each side. And then you just go ahead and punch. And by punching, you just pull down the handle. So now we've got our little punches already done. Okay, let me put this one in here and punch. Okay, it's ready to go. I'm just going to set that aside for just a second. I wonder if I cut this the wrong size. So I shouldn't have gone off the edges like that. Sorry, troubleshooting live class, right? Well done. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right because I shouldn't have gotten this little, see this is the troubleshooting. This little overhang punch right here where I, it's coming off the edge a little bit, can you see that? It should just be centered straight in the middle. So I'm thinking, it's been a minute since I planned this class, that I might have used a template or another way of centering this. So let me jump ahead a little bit. I was going to show you this in the next book, but I must have used the template on both of these. Okay, so to make a template for guiding your punches, I just like to take a piece of paper, fold it in half. Sorry, this is jumping around a little, you guys. My thoughts are a little disorganized. I'm trying to figure, remember what I did. Okay, and I like to fold it straight in half, and then I have that center line. So now I can put that fold line, that score line, right there at that center arrow and cinch. And we'll be using this in another journal. So now you can see I have a perfectly centered mine. So I could take this, I'm just going to do it on a page. So these are the little pages that I made. Okay, for the for the book, these are all the different little pages, some of them I pre punched these I haven't punched yet. And you can stack them up pretty high, it can do about two millimeters of height in there. So that two millimeter chipboard that works great in here. Okay. And now I can see that I want to center this on here and what it looks like I did you can do it with the template like this where I'm centering it on here and I'm making sure that my holes are going to fall where see how I'm going to have to shift it over just a little bit so that my hole on this side falls off the edge and then I have an equal space on either side of these holes you can use the template to do it or since this is so small and I can see where it's falling I can just put it right in here and you can see I have quite a stack these are bulky because I already glued the, all the layers on. Okay, and I'm going to, instead of using this center line like I originally misled you, I'm going to look at these two placements of these and center it between those. So I have the same distance here and the same distance there. 
Okay, aha, that's right. Okay, so now I have those equally punched holes with the same distance on each side. Little tricks. Let me do this last few pages. And whatever you do, you want to make sure that they're the same. So here I can see that I did it at, my left edge was at this three and three fourths mark on this side. So now my continuing pages, I'm gonna go ahead and do it at the three and three fourths mark. Okay, and now they'll all line up the same so that they'll go onto the coil correctly. These little papers are all from the Obed paper pad. And then these are those, that printable that I attached in the instructions that have all the different activities on them. And then I just positioned it on here and stitched around it with my machine, my sewing machine, but you don't have to do that. You could just glue it right on there. And then all the little stickers and things are coming from the Obed Marshall chipboard sheet or this fun little sticker book from Michaels. Okay, I have those all ready. I'm going to cut a new piece of this and punch it correctly. See how it's too big to fit in my trimmer? So I just use scissors on it to get it down to about the right size. And then use my trimmer to cut it to the right size. We wanna do this correctly, right? So that we can have our book fit together just perfectly. Sorry, I misled you there right at the beginning too, darn it. Okay, so my stand is two and three fourths. I really like this trimmer too because it has the eighth marks on it, which makes it really, really handy by eight. Okay, so I'm using the trimmer side. Now I'm going to flip this back over so that I have that edge. We're gonna score it again. Okay, three and a quarter. four and an eighth, and four and seven eighths. So Shannon, we have a question for you. Um, sure. What is the biggest size book you can make? As big as you want. And I will show you that with one of the next books that is longer than this base. Because you can move it down and keep punching, you can make it as long as you want. So depending on where, how you do your coil placement. So I'll show you some different coil options as well. These coils for the cinch and the mini cinch are 12 inches long, but you can do shorter coils in your book and do multiple bindings of shorter coils all the way up a really long spine. So you can do it as long as and as big as you have paper for, that is up to you. It's really handy. So even though it's tiny, it will still do great big books. Okay. Now I've got my piece correct. I'm going to line it up again. I'm just gonna punch both pieces at once. So last time I stuck in each end and punched. This time I'm going to stick in both pieces because this can handle it. Sometimes I like to clip when I'm using something that's slippery like this plastic, just to keep it kind of together. All right, three and three fourths. Right there. All right. Okay. So now we're ready to do our cinch binding. Didn't quite go all the way through because I'm working at a funny angle. All right. So now for this type of binding, this side is a handy little spot to put your coil on and load your pages. So you'll see on the coil, one side has these little rounded ends like this that are skinnier, and then these rounded ends are wider. So this is the side that you will put your pages onto, and this side can rest right here. You can do it by hand or you can use this guide on the side that holds it for you. Okay, so you'll wanna put your pages in order, however you want them, lay them on the coil, one more thing we didn't do was our cover. So let's do that real quick. So I used, based this album off of this little Polaroid frame from the Obed stickers. And I just used my little printout where I did a summer bucket list. Centered it there. 
in this space and then just trimmed around it. And you could have, ideally probably I would say cut these into strips and then just stick it behind. Cut them into the size. You'll see when you look at the printable, because I don't need these other ones, I'm not worrying about it. But when you look at the printable, there's some really faint gray lines that are the cutting guidelines for getting them the right size. This all should be there for you. Okay, so there's our cover. Easy as that. And then I just glued it onto a coordinating size paper as my pages. Okay, so let's punch that one too. Okay, so our cover goes on. And then our acetate piece goes on. I still did not punch that well. I don't know why I'm struggling. Okay, so when you're building a normal cinch book, you start, you'll notice I didn't put a back, the back cover on the back. I left the cover off. So I still have the cover off. And you start by building your pages from the bottom to the top and put your front page on. And then you actually put your cover on. So your back page goes on face down, which doesn't really apply in this, in this one because it doesn't matter which direction it goes. But I'll show you on another one. Face down, and then it's ready to be bound. And what that does is it will hide the seam of your cinched book behind that last cover page. Okay, so now I'm just going to turn it around to this side. So before we were using this side for the holes, I'm gonna flip it around and you'll see that by pushing down on the same handle, it pushes down this cinch bar right here. And the trick to this is just making sure that this opening right here is flush with the back of the machine. So see how I can line both of those up on my finger? I'm going to line both of them flush with the back of the machine. I find it's easier for me to put this bigger rounded coil end on the bottom. That just works best for me. And I just make sure that the bottom, I'll turn it this way, maybe you can see. The bottom and the top ends of the prongs are touching the back of the machine. Then just make sure your fingers are out because you don't want to get pinched. And you just push this down and it rounds and cinches that shut for you. So now we have a perfectly cinched binding spine. And now we just take this cover, flip it to the back, and it's ready to go. So now we have our little standing summer bucket list. Included in the class list is also a skew for some fun beads. Um, I like to add little dangles and tassels and things to my mini books and the coil is the perfect place to just attach those on. So you can see here, I just chose some beads that are, were in a kit. All of these beads and the string and the alphabet beads all came in one little pack and they all match this collection so pretty and so i just put some beads on the stretchy elastic that came in the kit with the beads and then used a paper scrap to just make a little paper tassel and tied them onto my coil and they just flip to the back the same way so as i'm flipping these through i can kind of move them to the side so they still show and then flip through my book and you can see i just used a bunch of different stickers little things and little gems little fun sparkles things that i felt like matched the idea is really simple and really basic, but I think it just turns out so cute. All right, let's go move to the next type of binding style. Does anyone have any questions on that one? Are we good after my mix up. Um, <laughs> just asking, um, can you please show the, the putting the, uh, the papers on the cinch again? Yes, I will show you again. We're going to do three books today total. So you'll get to see it again. Plenty of chances. Okay. Yep. Okay, so this next one that I'm going to do, we're going to do together, is a travel journal. So I like to have a little book that I can just bring with me when I'm going places. Just a fun little like handheld size book. And I found that the size of this paper, this little cardstock pack that was in the kit, made the perfect size book. So I based, like the other one, I based the size off that chipboard frame sticker and this one I based off this base page because that just makes it easier for me I don't have to do as much cutting right okay so again my covers are these are this frosted frosted poster board you can see it there and I just to the front cover added some of those fun glitter stickers in the fun colors in a travel theme and then that little subtitle at the bottom says together we adventure. And so this will be my 2022 summer journal. And you can see that I've done 
most of the pages, I'm just going to flip through and show you what I've done. So there's that front cover. And all of these pattern papers are from the Obed pad. So you can see this one, I just used double-sided tape. And all of the measurements for these are in those instructions that are in the chat. So I just made a little pocket so I can tuck things in there. But most of these pages are super basic. So here's one that I've already decorated about a trip to, gold, uh, to San Francisco. And you can see I just I used a circle punch. Like if you have a circle punch, you could use that to make little side tabs. I mounted my, inst I'm just gonna do Instagram, Instax size photos in this one. So I just mounted it on a little scrap. Again, this is a great way to use scraps in mini books. Behind my photo, added some stickers. And then this is a stamp from the stamp set in the SKU list. It's this Heidi Swap stamp set. This is a great set for mini books and travel journals because it's got lots of spots for writing, journaling, and dates which is what I kind of want to focus on in this. So this one's just a white base page, just as is from the pack. This side is Chinatown, where we like to always go eat in San Francisco. So I use the stamps again to describe what we had for dinner. And then the rest of these are waiting for my new, next adventures. So I wanted to show you one tip. So I added a little, because I didn't want just plain white pages in this book, sometimes I do, but this time I didn't want plain white. So I added a little, every so often a colored page and then a couple of white pages. So I did a colored page, two white pages. And I liked having a little tab on the side of each of these, but you'll notice that on some of them, I also have this band on this side that wraps around. And the reason that I did that is if you put all of your tabs on this side of your book, when you look at it from the side, it'll be, it'll be like this, right? This side will be built up with all those tabs and this side will be smaller, but you can see that now I have a pretty even stack because I balanced the tabs on this side with those paper borders on this side, so you can see those borders show up every so often right. Just a tip to get your book level, so if you have a book that's angling up you filled it too much on one side and you need to bring the other side up just a little bit too. Okay i'll just flip through these, so you can see what I did, but this is a free for all. Use the stuff from the class list and just do what you want to do. This one I did a little pull out, so I made this one into a pocket page and cut down a little piece that could pull out. You could also tuck pockets or pictures into that pocket. All the instructions are in the chat. This is one of those spots where I built up this side a little bit to add height to that other side. This one is just a page with a little tuck spot here. This one's kind of a belly band, so you can tuck things behind that. I like having interactive pages, but also lots of spots to add journaling. This one is a side pocket with some of the little tags from the cut apart sheet in the pad. And usually there's on the colored pages that I did, I would just add a little interactive element. So there's two more of those. Here's another belly band, but it goes across the bottom. You could make that a pocket too if you don't like the belly band if things tend to fall out of your books side pocket again so you can see i didn't like reinvent the wheel each page i just kind of did the same thing a couple of times there's another side belly band with a cut apart okay. there's that bottom pocket making an appearance again and it's on this side as well okay so i've got all these pages this one's a belly band too but again, you could do that a side pocket if you wanted. And then this one has a belly band going the other direction. I kind of just used my scraps and just kind of played. And then the back cover also has that same pocket. So that's another thing, another tip for mini books is you can kind of mirror. So the front and last back pages, especially since I'm using clear acetate as a protective cover, I wanted them to match. So I used the same paper on both sides. I did a pocket on, the, on both sides the same. So you could kind of work that way. Okay, let's go ahead and bind this guy. Okay, so you can see that if I want a spine that goes all the way down the whole length of this book, okay, the whole length, it's longer than the mini cinch. So how do we cinch something longer? So this is where you're going to see how you can make a book any size. Okay, so I already pre pinched some of the pages, so we weren't here all day. So let me find that spot. <clears throat> okay. All right, now is where we're going to use this little piece that's tucked into the side of the mini cinch right here. Okay, it's a little guide. 
It just has a little spot where it lives. And I found that I just am in the habit now of popping that back in there every time I pull it out, then I don't lose it. Okay. And then right here are corresponding holes that this fits into. Okay. And how you know which one you need is based on the size of your book. And the guide is printed right here on the base of the mini cinch. So for hole measurements, so whole inches or half inch measurements, you would put it in A. For quarter, eighth, five eighths, A4, A5, A6, A7 measurements, you would put it in B. And for three eighths, seven eighths, that type of measurement, you would put it in C. So it's all right there, so you don't have to memorize it. You can remember, you can have it for reference. This one measures six, because it was this exact paper, I know it's six and a half, so I need it in A, because that's a half inch measurement. Okay, and we're just going to start punching. Sometimes I like to start from the back, because you just want to make sure you're punching the right side every time. Another cool thing about this guide, let me show you this up close really quick, if you can see it. There is a little line there at the bottom, and it tells you where that two millimeter mark is, and so that you don't go above it. Okay, since this one has a sliding pocket, I'm gonna make sure I'm going the right way. All right. Okay, so I start with this in, and I push this all the way into the back. You know, every so often, I just, especially when I'm cutting acetate, I like to clear out this track just to make sure there's no little punch remnants left in there so that I get a nice good punch. Okay. So I'm going to put it in here and you'll see I'm butting it up against this guide and all the way to the back of the machine. Okay, that's our first punch. All right, so now we've punched just that far. So you can see we need to keep going. So how do we do that? We pull that out. I always tuck it back in so I don't lose it. And on this side, you'll notice this little peg right here. So now you're going to bring your punch all the way down and you're going to look for the second to the last hole that you previously punched. So that one right there. And that one is going to line up with this peg. I can see it from my side, okay? And you just kind of push that peg down in and now you can see it's holding it secure. And now I'm just going to keep punching. So Shannon, um, real quick, what's the uh, package of paper you're using right now? I am using Obed Mar Marshall's Buenos Dias 12 by 12 paper pad. And then this is the it's recollections white cardstock pack that is four and a half by six and a half okay thank you mm -hmm. so that should be all listed in the class supplies too if those are available to look at still okay so i still need one more hole right here at the top see how i'm missing one to match down here so again i'm just going to keep going so this is why i said you could do really any length book you wanted to because i could just keep moving this all the way down the length however long i wanted it to be right okay so there we have those pages they're ready to add and we'll just keep going i'll show you this again so you can see it again okay make sure on your first punch you always bring out that guide if you're going longer than the So you can see that was a pretty good stack of papers. Pulling it out, sticking it back in the side. Okay, looking for this second hole to line up with that peg. And again, I need one more right there. So it just depends on the length of your book, how many times you need to punch it. Okay, and then last I have my acetate cover. So one more time, you get to see it. Works just the same. You only need that guide on that first punch. Then you just use this little tab on the side. This is clear, so it's kind of hard to see where my tab is. I want to make sure I get it straight. Come around this side. The lighting in here is hard for me to see it. I want to make sure, oh, there I can see it. Okay, just because it's that clear acetate, I want to make sure I'm lining it up properly. Okay, all right, so there's that last one, okay? All punched right there, and we're all ready to go. Okay, so let's do the coil again on this side. 
This one I didn't pre-cut my coil to size, so you can see, I'll show you how to do that. The pack in the class list comes with four 12 inch coils, but I don't need it to be that long. So you can see that you can count how many holes you have, or you can just hold it up. That's what I usually do. Or you can put a piece on. That's also helpful. And then just use the little, these are the cinch pliers, but you can use any wire cutter. But I like these because they're the plier and the wire cutter at the same time. And you just cut it to the length that you need it. Okay, and then use this piece on another project. So I'm set that aside. Okay. All right, so again, you can see this size fits perfectly on the side here. All right, it's ready to be loaded. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I found that with books like this, with especially if you have a book that has a different cover than the front, so you can see my covers are different now because one's plain and one has the alphabet stickers on it, right? So I just pretend that I'm flipping this back page around and to the front of the book. Okay, sometimes it's easier to think of it like that, just to do it before you even put the pages on. Okay, so I want my back page to come around like pretend there's a coil and it's coming around and now it's facing the top. That is the correct way to stack your book for binding. Okay, And then if you're good, you can just do this whole thing on here or you can do it in smaller chunks. So you can see that these holes just line up and I'm just laying them onto the coils. Making sure I get all the pieces. My belly band pieces are <laughs> falling down in the way. I wouldn't normally put my little tuck spot in there until after I'd cinched. Okay, keep going. So I'm building it from the bottom to the top. And our back cover has been flipped around to the front of the book. So it's face down, so it's right sides together covers. Okay. Missed the prong with that last cover. Okay, so can everyone see that? So it's still open, but I've got all my pages now on there in the right spot. Back cover face down on top of my front cover. Okay, did that cover the questions that people wanted to see about loading them on there again? I'd say so. Okay, all right, so now I'm just gonna turn this again and I'll show you how to cinch one that's longer because just like the other side, we only have a cinching space that's this wide, but I have more coil than that, right? So again, I like to put this more wide rounded side on the bottom. That's just my preference. I find I get a really good cinch that way, making sure that the ends of the, both sides of the prongs are flush against the back, holding it there firmly and then cinching. So now you can see I have it half cinched half open, half cinch. So now I just move it down again. And if one of these coils ends up in there too, it's not gonna hurt it because it's already cinched to that same size. So you can just not worry about it too much, okay? So now I have my fully cinched spine. And now I like to turn mine so that that wide little side of the coil is flush with the back page. And then this is where you now do the reverse. So I'm gonna flip my back page back to the back and now you can see on the back of the book that seam is hidden by the back cover or the last page of your book so there's that seam hidden inside so that's why we flip that last page around to the front so that we can hide that seam so here's our little book it's all ready to go ready to go on journeys and travels for 2022 which i hope we get to do more of this year i also made a little charm spine charm for this one I just made it with the alphabet beads. So these alphabet beads come in there with it and it's so fun. So I just did travel and just a bunch of the little beads. You can, I don't know if you can see that it says travel in the fun alpha beads. And I'm just going to put it onto my spine by threading it through the coil at the top. I use Shannon, my pliers to grab know. the end. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you have to know if um, the coil uh, is available in a smaller diameter? That one is the smallest that it comes in, I believe. Okay. The five eighths. There are all different colors, so that's fun. We're using the 
gold one today, but they come in all different fun colors. There's my little travel spine. So now I'm ready to go. And the, also a fun thing about this, these coils is it's a great size to just slip a pen down in. Let's see if this one will fit. So you can see I just slipped a pen into the side of my travel journal, so it's all ready to go. It'd be cuter if I had a colorful pen that matched my book. So, you know, you could do that, decorate it, do a spinet pen. <laughs> that's a new thing that's really fun. Okay, all right, so there's that size book. Okay, and our last book. Hannon, um, a huge question. I have a question for you um, before okay. we continue on to the next one. So it seems like um, in the handout with the instructions, um, that last page with the colored um, words on it, uh there the squares overlap so we can't see like the entire text uh i can edit i can move the squares but i think if i change the the sizing of the squares then it won't fit um, that's strange i wonder what happened i can tell you what size this square is if you don't mind correcting it sorry about I that Jimena. No worries. I can give it a try. Um, I don't or resizing the font size, maybe the font being different, because that was one thing about the, that printable is you'd have to have the same fonts that I had for it to be exact. And I did not know which fonts they are, but I could add that later when the class is posted. Okay. Um, if you want the exact same font, but you may just have to adjust the font and the font size to make it fit. So the box should be one and three fourths high by two and a half wide. Okay, I'll try to work on that. Um, okay, thank you. Sorry. No problem. I probably anyway. should have used like a really standard font, you know, the things you think of in retrospect. It's okay. Either way, I have put the um, Word document in the in the chat. So if anybody else wants to, you know, edit it and just make it your own, you're free to yep. do so. Yep. And now you know what size that square is. So, okay, this is the last book we're going to make. So this one is a gatefold cinched book. So you'll see here I use that same plastic acetate as my cover, but I've got two cinch wires on either side. This shows you how to do a hidden coil. So if you see on this side, see how the coil is poking out, but I still have this solid side to my album. So that's a hidden hidden coil, right, in a gatefold with a double coil. So this one's got all kinds of fun cinch techniques going on. So I'll just flip through it really quick. And this one has lots of interactive pages. I can show you some of them. I don't know if we'll get to all of them, but we'll try. Okay, so this is just, again, just some fun different sized pages that have different little interactive features. Oop, my A sticker, I did not stick down well enough. You can see how I use the stamp set here. This was from our trip, our granddaughters to the ocean. This is a fun page that opens up, but then it also has a top pocket that has another little book inside of it. Granddaughters made grandpa into a mermaid in the sand. This one has a pocket here at the bottom, so those can be removed, those photos. This one is a fun little trick that I'll show you that you can actually snip the edge so that it kind of, oops, it's tight because I did a reinforced. You can snip it so that it locks back into the coil, but then it's got a hidden little spot in here. And this is where I tucked the rest of my photos because I wasn't quite done working in this book. So I tucked the rest that I want to add into this little pocket for now. Letting those just pop back in. Here's another pocket. You can do a standard page that's just Clean. This one is an extended page that I'll show you. This one is also one of those little hidden spines that opens up into an envelope, so you could fill that up. All these instructions, if we don't get to them all, are in that instruction sheet. Here's another flip page, and there's another little pocket page. Okay, so I just kind of flipped them back and forth. You could have all your folds go from one side. You could flip them back and forth like I'm doing, or you can have multiples coming from each side like that. And then it closes shut. Okay. All right, let's get started. This one's the big one, but we're going to try to get it all done. We have 20 minutes. I think we can do it. 
Okay, so before when I showed you that template that I made, that is very, very helpful in this book because I'm centering my coil on, a, on that six and a half inch height. So I went ahead and based this again, this is that white cardstock, it's six and a half inches. And I just based my size off of that because then I could use these holeless pages and not have to worry about doing cutting on my white cardstock. So I went ahead and made the template. And again, how I did that, is just fold it in half. Okay, really tight. I'm gonna move this, bring this inch down. Put that fold line lined up with that center and you'll see how this is really helpful when we do this book. So my crease is on that center arrow that I'm going to punch Now I'm going to hang on to that. If it's hard for you to see that center line where you scored it, you could also draw a line with a pencil and for these purposes today, so you can see I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so there's our center line centered on our cinch. Okay, make sure it's correct. All right, so for page one, I am, we're working with a 12 by six piece and I scored it right down the middle and folded it to be right in half, okay? This is my scoring tool from the trim and scoreboard. I'm not gonna show you every score on the trim and scoreboard. I'll just tell you the measurements and they're also in there. Okay, so for this page, I did this fun little pocket that matches the curve of the paper. So before I glue this shut, I'm just going to take my scissors. I love these spring loaded scissors and you can pick really any line in this paper and all this paper is in the Obed paper pad and I'm just going to cut along that line. This is the interactive pages segment. Okay, so now I just want this bottom flap to be the pocket. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue this part down. If you wanted to, you could just glue the sides and have a top pocket too, a double stacked pocket. There's all kinds of things you can do when you just start making pockets. But for this one, I just pulled it over and glued the top. Then I also had double-sided tape, but I might have left it at my desk, so I'm just going to use this. The double-sided tape is my preferred way of doing pockets because this tends to be stickier when you stick something in it and the double sided tape just stops it. But since I didn't bring it with me, I'm just going to use this. It'll be faster anyway. But my tip is to use double sided tape and just see, put it along the two sides that you are sealing shut. So there's page one. You can see my pocket there. Okay, it's like a little wavy pocket. And then the back side of that one. I just left plain just to add photos or journaling. Okay, and so I, since I'm cinching this one on that side, I'm gonna just trim this up a little bit. Didn't quite get my score line perfectly straight, so I'm just gonna trim that up. Okay, I need to cinch the center on this side. So let's grab our template. And I'm going to center the template on my page. And I'm going to cinch right through the template, but then I can put use the template line to make sure that that punch is perfectly centered on my page. So see how that helped me? So that's just a little tip, okay? If it's narrower, see how this is too big so I can't see my platform. If it's narrower, you can center it completely by using this ruler, okay? But if you're working bigger, then make a template. Okay, I'm just gonna make two stacks up here. One is for my flipping to the left and one's flipping to the right. Okay, page two. Page two is this little flip page right here. And to do that, I just took a one of those standard pieces of paper and I scored it to make this little flip page, okay? So just scored it to the side. And then I just cut a piece of this green paper to the size and glued it on there. So I'm not going to do that right now because I didn't pre-cut that one, but I don't want to use time on just showing you cutting because you guys know how to cut. All right, so let's just say I just did that. Now I can use, this one's smaller, right? Because this is a smaller flip page in my book. So I can just use the ruler grid to find center. And what I like to do if I'm trying to mark a center on my 
my pages just so I don't miss it. This is four and a half inches. So I'll just make a little tiny scored tick mark at two and a quarter. So that's the center line. So I don't know if you can see that there, but there's that tiny little scored tick mark right at the top. And you won't even notice it once it's bound into the machine, okay? So you can do that. That's another way to find center. Or you can do it here where I have my four and a half and four and a half inch lines. So there's my four and a half inch on that side, four and a half inch on that side, center it to the middle, and there you go. Okay, so really on that one, I didn't even need to do that tick mark, but that is another way that you can do it. Okay, so there's my flip to the right stack. Okay, this next page. So this one is the side pocket page. And to make that one, I just took this strip of yellow and scored it right directly down the middle. And again, I'd use double-sided tape on this if you've got it. I just prefer it, it sticks a little better. And I just ran it down the top and bottom of the inside of that yellow piece. Okay, and then the side that I want my pocket on, this is just straight from the cardstock pack. Just gonna line that up at the seam, at the fold and fold it around. Okay, so now you can see I've got that double pocket on two sides. Okay, just like that. And then this is just stickers that added to make it cute. Okay, I'm gonna use my template again on this one. Now you could wait and punch all of your pages at the end if you want to. I found for me that it was a little easier for me to do them a page at a time this way because then I could keep track of which way I wanted them to flip. That just helped me in this book. Okay, page four is this fun interactive page. So it has this journaling piece that falls out, pulls out, but it stops when it hits the end. So I'll show you how to do that one. Okay, so for the inside of it, just want to make sure that I'm doing all the right steps. For the inside, I cut this little strip of paper, the measurements are in the instructions. I'll do it right here so you can see it. And I scored it in equal increments, so it's a half inch, half inch. And then I'm folding it over like this, okay, on those lines. And I wanted it to be triple like that to just make it a little bit more sturdy. Okay, and then I'm going to glue it into place. So this is going to be our stopper. Okay. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. I just need to double one side. Okay, so fold one side over to the score line. And then you can put adhesive on that other side. So you see I have this side that's double enforced. That's our stopper half. And this is how we're going to attach it to our journaling cards. Okay. So then I'm just going to take the journaling cards and glue it onto that little flap. And I just did them back to back. These are from the cut apart sheet in the paper pad. Just line them up. Okay, so now I've got this little stopper going on. Okay, then for this piece, I scored it right down the middle. And I'm going to show you how a cool feature of the trim and scoreboard that helps you make precise cuts. Okay, so we're going to be cutting. So I'm going to flip this back over. So I folded this and burnished it on my score line, but I'm going to open it back up and I'm going to place that seam right there on my cutting track. So you can see the zero is your cut, cutting spot, right? On the side of this handle of the blade that you hold, there is a little grooved mark. And that is where the blade is. It's right in the center right there. So I can lift this up and use the ruler on this piece to start a cut that's one inch down and stops one inch up for our piece to slide out. So I just line up the blade line with the one, drop it down, and then I'm going to bring that blade line all the way down to the five. 
So now you can see I've cut a little slit right there with one inch above it and one inch below it. It's really easy to use with this trimmer because of the way the rulers are set up on it. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Okay, then I'm just going to slide my journaling card right through there. I'm actually going to adhere this down to it now that my journaling card's in there. Okay, and so see how that stopper keeps it from falling out, right, from the inside. Now you'll just do double-sided tape or adhesive just around the top and bottom or even just this side. This side will be cinched, so you don't really have to do that side. I did it anyway for good measure. And now we have our pullout page. Yeah. And if you, I liked it being a little tight, but if you like it a little more loose, you can go down up in your slit just a little bit more. Okay, so that one, let's use the template to cinch it, to cinch punch. And I'm going to do this side. Okay, now it's ready to go on this side. Okay, keep flipping through here. Okay, this page is our next one that we'll be doing. We have eight minutes. We may stop before we get to the very end. I'll see how much we can do. Okay, I'll get the base of the page at least. Okay, so for this one, I did two score lines so that I could have a gatefold within my gatefold album. Okay, kind of fun. And then this will be your pocket. And to make sure that people knew it was a pocket, I just used my circle punch. Make sure I have it the right way up. And just punched a notch out of the top. And then this one just glues into the center. Again, I wish I would have brought my double-sided tape, but this will be faster anyway. Okay, then you glue that to the center, and then you have your top pocket there. And I just folded another piece of paper and made it into a little insert to pull out. And this, that's what this piece was. Okay, just a little scrap, folded and tucked in. Okay, and then I just took the yellow strips, and I wanted one side of mine to overlap a little further. So you can take this yellow strip, and this is a good way if you place it further out, like off barely on the edge of the page, you can make it longer or you can go flush with the page, whatever you like to get it to the size you like, and then just glue it on the same way we did that side pocket. So I'll glue this one on. Just wrap it around. We do it about halfway so it hangs out a little bit. Okay, so now we know that that opens up. When I'm doing a gatefold and they're both the same color, sometimes I like to put a little something on the side, which is also why I added this little flower here. And I used a little Velcro dot, but you don't need to, to keep it shut. And then the other two yellow strips just go here on the inside just to give it a little bit more color, but I'm going to skip that part right now. Okay, let's go ahead and punch this one. So find center. Just the same that we've been doing. Okay. And this one I had flipped that way. Goes that way. Okay. This page is that one that is cut so that it can adhere to the coil. So basically the base is folded in half. And then I took this piece, this green piece, and there's a score line on it that's in the measurements. And it's a little bit bigger on the inside than on the outside, just because I liked how that looked, okay? And I did this because I found that sometimes with this single-sided paper pad paper, it um, tends to want to tear slightly as I'm over time, as I open and close and open and close this little binding method. And so I have done it so that it is a little more sturdy. Okay, so on the smaller panel, of the fold, I put adhesive on the whole thing around all the sides. But on the bigger panel, I just did it at the top and the bottom. And that way you can have a um, pocket on the inside. Okay, so just make sure you put the right side to the outside. Oops. 
fold it around just like we did that other one. So now you can see I have a pocket on the inside, but it's a solid reinforcement on the front. All these yellow strips are just decorative. And then there's another little bottom pocket piece that goes on the inside like that. Okay, so let's cinch this one and I'll show you how I cut it to make it so that that flap will open. Okay, this one is the exact size of this paper. So you go ahead and center it and punch it. Okay, and then I just took my scissors and cut right from the edge into that area. And since this is pretty chunky now, I'm cutting out a pretty good chunk. Can you see that right there? Yeah, we'll, do it. we'll do it all the way down. And that is what allows you to pop that in and out of the coil. This is also a great tip if you think, I wish I could add another page into my cinch book. Well, punch a page, snip it a little bit on the edge where the holes are at each hole, and then sn snap it right into your thing. So see, if I wanted to add another page, I could just add it right in, okay? Or you can do this method where it's that little hidden hinge, okay? All right. That one's ready. Okay, I think I might stop doing pages now so I can show you how to do the gatefold. But you can follow your instructions and see all of these interactive pages are completely laid out for you in the book. Here's our cover. Okay, so I did it very similarly to the first little summer flip book. So see how we're doing an accordion fold, just like we did on that little summer flip book, but I did it on two sides, okay, with the gate fold opening in the middle. Okay, now to punch this, so this is the outside of my book where the valleys of the fold are, right here, and I am going to actually fold back the covers, so I'm working on the inside of my book on the fold that was created in that valley. And I'm going to punch the fold of that valley. Okay, so I'm using my template, making sure it's in there straight. Okay. And it has punched through two layers, okay? Sometimes with this acetate, you do have to pull the little hanging chads out, the little pieces if they don't punch all the way, all the way through, okay? So now I've got two holes there two sets of holes that perfectly line up. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay. I need to just have a pair of scissors if you need that. Okay, so now I'm going to fold it right side out again. And I've got my two sets of holes. And now I'm going to put my coil in. Okay, so this is a scrap from the last time where you only need six prongs worth. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can save this again for something else. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do another couple little mini books there. Okay, so then now I'm going to load this from the inside and I'm going to go through from the center of the book on the inside with the smaller prongs through both sets of holes. Okay, so you can kind of see how that's going. So I'm going out from the center on both sides. Okay, just like that. Then you would load your pages on. Okay, so this side. This is what we have so far, so we'll add those on. And on this side, you're going to load them this direction. So you're gonna put your first page, just like you would want it in the book. One, two, three, okay. And I'm gonna cinch this side. Actually, I'm gonna wait to put this coil in. You know, it's just easier to do them one side at a time because then you don't have to worry about things falling off the other side. Okay, so now I've got the front half of my book cinched in. And this will hide kind of at the back, behind the back page. And you can see there how the little coil is coming through and peeking through in that valley. Okay, but on the inside, you've got the full coil. All right, we'll do it on the other side as well. 
really quick. I know we're out of time. Okay, and so this side will go this way. So we'll load to this side from front to back. Okay. And then I'll switch that side. Okay, roll it to the back, and then you've got your double gatefold album. And then the covers come around to the front, just like that. Isn't that fun? So for this one, I just created with my scrap and stickers and a few Velcro dots a closure. You could also do a beaded elastic closure around here with your beads that are in the class kit. So many fun things that you can do with this mini cinch. So I know we're out of time. I really hope you enjoyed class today and that you'll try some new fun bookbinding techniques with the mini cinch by We Are Memory Keepers. It's really fun and I hope that you will love it as much as I do. Thanks for coming.